Well, they do say that uh, time is a harsh mistress, but I've heard the same thing about the laws of science being a harsh mistress. I suppose it depends on what really grinds your gears in life, but it does go without saying. It's hard to believe that we're already at the end of October now, and correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't it just feel like it was yesterday when summer had just begun? Never mind the fact that we're almost at the end of 2022. Sometimes I just want to take a step back, look around, and just say, hey, time, slow your ass down. I want to enjoy the moment that I got. Yeah, I digress. So on that note, welcome to yet another edition of the Wandering Yuki Cheese Cafe. Coming back uh, full force today in downtown Montreal after taking a little bit of a break after my extensive uh, travels through Montreal and the various areas over the summer. So many hours logged in, so many good pieces of food, so many good brews, obviously. So you know what? I needed a breather. Now I'm back, ready to kick some ass and maybe take advantage of the weather while I still got some sunshine and also whip out the fedora and the trench coat and see if anyone's going to come up to me and say, hey, are you a detective? Yeah, kids have been asking me that too. Hard to believe, eh? But you know what? It is what it is, and as long as I give some kind of amusement, so be it. And it's Friday night. I feel like brewing myself, and I do have a little taste for a bit of beef tartare. So I'm just going to be looking around, see what I can find here, find out where my legs are going to take me. Before we do that, I have one suggestion for you. Smash that like button below, subscribe to the channel, because I'm putting together some new content for the next couple of weeks. The very top of Place de Marie. I did try to come here over the summer once because I wanted to check out Les Enfants Terribles. Or if any of you are outside the Quebec region, it's the Terrible Kids or Terrible Children. It's a chain of restaurants from what I've heard, and there's one location right at the top here that actually has a really nice view of the city. I did go grab a brew once and took a pose over there, which I ended up putting on a dating app back in 2017. Oh no, it was 2019 when I first started using those. Yeah, maybe one of these days I'm going to have to go back and check it out, because they do have some decent brews around. But hey, I'll say that for the next time I want to do some other wanders, because that was a lot of wandering I've done over the summer, over the uh, Oldie series. And actually, if you want, I'm going to put a card to the top right corner if you want to check out that playlist, because that was a fun project, and I'm really proud of how it turned out. So many good memories created, and immortalized for everyone to see. I had a route that I wanted to take because I had another idea that I wanted to do to get some tartar, but there seems to be some kind of a protest going on, so it doesn't seem like I'm going to be able to go that route. I might have to find an alternate direction. Maybe I could get a brew along the way as an appetizer. An SAQ selection over here that seems to be, you know, nothing out of the ordinary. Um, I guess I could explain. In the Quebec, that's the Société des Alcools de Québec. So it's one place where you can get your hard liquors, certain types of wine, and some imported beers. It's not like a rest of Canada where it seems like you have your designated beer store, and you got to go to a designated liquor store for beer, wine, liquor, and such. When I went to Ontario once and then went to the LCB over there, I always thought, and it's kind of weird that I could go in there, walk out with a fancy scotch, at the same time as getting my Labatt 50. Yeah, talk about ghetto and fancy all at once. And obviously if you're outside of a Canada period, then you're going to have places where you can get beer, wine, and spirits everywhere. Hard to believe. But anyways, I digressed over there. That was a pretty neat one because you get some collector stuff, like signature things. Well, it's mostly good to look at. The taste? You'd have to pay maybe a couple hundred, sometimes thousands of bottle, thousands of dollars for a bottle of that stuff. But they did have occasionally, like pre-pandemic, some uh, wine tasting sessions and even whiskey tasting sessions. You pay a flat rate, like 15 bucks, they could try a couple of the whiskeys that are on hand, which I thought was neat because the $15 flat, get some pretty good ones, like stuff that would probably cost you, I would say 20 bucks a shot if you go to a bar. So anyways, I'm gonna be making my way to one of these back streets which I'm not exactly familiar with, but I do see that there was a terrace and a cozy place there, so if I can't get to my other destination, this might be an option. Alone. 
So that's gonna be safe for another time because I took a quick look at the menu. It's a place that's called Cafe Parvis and I've seen it a couple of times when I'm out on walks and in the evening, you come here, especially in the summertime when they have the terrace out, they have these really nice lights. It gives a very quaint, cozy vibe. I looked at the menu and it doesn't look like they had anything resembling beef tartare on it. Unless they use another word for it, then yeah, it's not gonna be my destination. But luckily there's no blockage in this direction, so I'm gonna be heading to my original spot that I was planning to do. Two busts in one night. That's not a good sign. Yeah, I was looking at the menu at Nixa Bistro because I remember that uh, pretty vividly. 2019, I went there once on a winter night and then that was actually the first place I ever tried out beef tartare in my life and thought I'd give it another visit. So they had some pretty good brews to highlight, maybe think of some old stories or friends and etc. But unfortunately, I only had salmon tartare. I'm really looking for raw cow today. And if that uh, restaurant is uh, looking familiar to you, I would suggest clicking on the link on the top right corner and you'll be able to revisit when I first show this off during my first walk along Saint Laurent Boulevard back in, I believe it was January. Yeah, remember it was like a really cold, frigid day and I was still walking around filming like an idiot. Yeah, when your head's not in the right place, sometimes you do crazy things. Uh, I don't know if that's crazy, it's just amusing everyone. <laughs> Sometimes it pays to be a guy that comes to bars to go for supper alone too because there was a line to get into this place and because I was one person, I had one spot available so I decided I was going to take it. So I ended up at um, Les Enfants Terribles, like I passed by earlier. Something was just calling my name and I figured this is going to be the great tartare hunt and if I'm going to end up here, then why not? Might as well showcase it. So just to give you a bit of a recap, this is located on the 46th floor of uh, Place de Marie. It's one of the tallest buildings you're gonna find in Montreal and it's actually got a really nice terrace it's open up during the summer and in fact they actually have a bar outside and a DJ booth I guess like so a host parties and they got some pretty nice brews as well one thing I do remember coming here for was uh, for some of the Bat 50. It's a classic one because it was one that my dad used to drink all the time but in this case I decided to go for another one that's a classic Goose Island IPA this was actually one of my first IPs I ever tried out and it's a pretty decent one. In case you don't know what an IPA is, and I guess I'll give you a Beer 101 tutorial too. So I don't think I ever recall showcasing that in my Beer 101 video from a while back. And actually, if you do want to see that again, I'm putting a link on the top right corner for you to watch that too and revisit it before my editing skills really got nice. So IPA, it's just an acronym for India Pale Ale. It, pale ales are pretty typical in Britain where they're going to have a bit of a caramel color, they might be slightly sweet, and in the case of an India Pale Ale, those actually have a little bit more hops to it, so it gives it a bit of a bitter taste. Apparently the reason that it was named is because the Britons used to actually ship the stuff to India too for reasons I don't fully understand. I have a friend who's more of a history buff than I am, so he'd be able to answer that better than me. But that's really the thing about it. And I do remember having the same conversation with him ages ago that IPAs didn't seem to be as prevalent in the beer sections in the past. And most you probably would have seen Alexander's Keats India Pale Ale. I remember them for the commercial where they were saying those who like it, like it a lot. 
but now you can actually find IPs like almost like it's candy or uh, crack on the streets. Pretty neat to have. But it's not for everyone, because a lot of people will not like the hops of it. Me, personally, I could dig it from time to time. And I do kind of like this one. It's actually got started in 1988 from the Goose Island Brewer that's located in Chicago, Illinois. I actually haven't been to Chicago yet, but it's actually one city I want to visit one of these days, mostly for the Batman nerd in me. But before I get to that story, here's a toast to Friday the Day of Legends. Ah. So, I remember that one of my favorite movies, The Dark Knight, was filmed on location in Chicago. And a part of me does want to see some of those streets and landmarks just be able to say, okay, I remember, I'm on the street where the Joker's truck got flipped by the Batmobile or by the uh, Batpod or whatever it was. Or thinking like, this is where the chase happened under the rail. Kind of neat to be able to witness all of that. But you know, so much to see in this world, so little time, especially so little money. So you got to make the most of what you got. You know, this is something I've realized sitting here alone or even sometimes with friends when we're at the bar. There's always a certain kind of intrigue whenever you're watching because you always look and you're thinking to yourself that what kind of cocktail are they making? Like, what's that they're mixing together? Now, as you will probably know if you've been following my channel for a while, I'm not a cocktail guy, but there is definitely a sense of intrigue when I'm watching what they're concocting together. But hey, it is what it is. Love doing that too. And sometimes when you stay at the bar, you get to chat with some interesting people along the way as well. But but actually, it's been a little bit of time. My Goose Island IP has been depleted, and I'm going for my next little drink. Glass of water. Ah, sorry, that's a little joke over there. So I have one friend who's from Holland where if he was to see that, then he would probably be losing his mind. Because in his mind, he always thinks that if you drink glass of water, then it's against his religion, or he refuses to drink it because fish make love in it, or he says he just doesn't drink it out of principle. I have yet to figure out exactly what he's trying to talk about because water is good for you. 99.9% .9 of the doctors out there say having water is good for hydration and general health. The 0.1% out there are probably just quacks who are, got their degree from a cereal box. But just so I don't disappoint him, I did go for a round two, which is a nice white Belgian beer. One pint of Hogarden. Or actually, if he's watching me, I'm probably going to say Hogarden. Yeah, every time I try to pronounce it, I feel like I'm a cat that's coughing up a hairball. Okay, this is a really nice one. So, I guess if you never followed me and you want to know what a Belgian white is like, most of the whites are going to be made out of wheat instead of barley, and they sometimes add some coriander and orange peel to the mix, so it gives it a very slightly fruity flavor too. And just to get added to the fruitiness of it, they always put a slice of orange in there, which you can leave inside for flavor, and then suck it up for maximum vitamin C action. I have to admit, this is actually a smaller glass than I remember, because when I first started drinking this, I want to say it was... 2010, 2011, something like that. I was with some colleagues and I was were still working at HMD when that existed up in Canada. And this is before I really knew anything about beer. My only experience with beer at that point was probably whatever was at Trois Brasseurs or Three Brewers, um, whatever was at the corner store, so like the cheap stuff. Hogarden Garden was kind of one of my introductions to beer that's outside of the uh, province and the country. And it's really, really good, honestly. So we're sitting there and I got introduced to this by him, so it kind of makes me think back to the old HMV days. I will say though, that the glass is actually a really small one. What I do recall call the most is that the older glasses used to be this giant barrel. Obviously you were able to fill it up with a pint. Merci. And these things are actually pretty huge. Like it almost gave the illusion that you're drinking a huge barrel of beer, but the glass is always very thick, so you actually were able to drink a lot less in there than you would probably guess. So yeah, illusion is the key. It's like what a magician would say, never give away your secrets. Like a magician never gives away their secrets. Stoked to have this because it's been at least a month since I had a nice beef tartare for myself. I'm stoked for it. <coughs> now, 
If you've been following me for a while, you probably know that beef tartare is something I enjoy getting when I'm out and about. And the reason for that is very simple, is that it's not a recipe that I make on my own. Because, you know, it's beef tartare, it's raw cow. You're not going to be making that unless you really know what you're doing and you know what kind of cut of meat that you want to make. So you got to be careful with that. And I like to treat myself from time to time. You only live once, right? Unless you're James Bond, in which case you live twice. Once when you're born and once when you die. Wait, is that how the expression goes? Whatever the case. And then moving on to the other stuff, one thing I do enjoy seeing is how every restaurant I've been to prepares all of their stuff. There's going to be some consistency that you find. Most of the time you're going to find this will have some Parmesan cheese, their tartare sauce, which might consist of Dijon mustard. Sometimes they get it with bacon. Sometimes they get it with maybe some capers in here like they have in here. And they have some parsley too. And if I've been to other spots over the last summer that put their own little toppings, like I remember one, oh yeah, that was at the La Barac. In fact, put the link on the top right corner, you can see that again. Uh, they put it with sun-dried tomatoes on top, which is pretty awesome. But there was one spot I went to that I didn't record. I actually topped off with popcorn of all things. I thought, man, interesting. It's a funny story to tell, but it's super ghetto. I'm pretty sure my crunches are being caught on camera too. Oh yeah, the taste is amazing as well. And you probably saw early in the montage, I got a little salad instead. Normally I get these things with fries, but I haven't been having as many vegetables as I should. And I thought I should really correct my nutritional factor too for maximum uh, revitalization to pre-inhibit the Nevada seed beds. Of huh. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Point is, it's pretty good. It's highly recommended, and I miss this taste a lot. All around awesomeness. Well, very satisfying beef tartare and a couple of good brews going around. One thing I didn't film was I did go for a dessert, which is not something I do very frequently, but I figured when in Rome today, I may as well. I had a really good blueberry cheesecake that had some chopped almonds on there that was pretty awesome very tasty so if ever you're in the area this is highly recommended it's nighttime now and well it doesn't yeah i'm kind of testing this out with the uh, my camera at night because i heard that this thing doesn't really film as well at night compared to daytime but one thing at a time and then we'll uh, work around with the bugs what i want to do now is kind of find my way to get a nice coffee for myself and no i'm not talking about mcdonald's coffee because if you've been following me for a while you kind of know my thoughts on the mad clown parlor I want to punch him in the face. Yeah, my coffee run was a bit of a bust. Another bust today, but at least I have some kind of a coffee. Um, originally I was walking around in Old Montreal because I was going to get myself a gift, courtesy of uh, some family. Then I was trying to find another coffee shop and I remembered there was the 49th Parallel Roaster that I went to once on my lunch break when I was at the office. Thing is that after four o'clock, it seemed like that they closed down for some kind of a private event. So I wasn't able to go there. So I ended up with Brûlerie Mont Royal at some Depanard or corner store over at the Central Station because Tim Hortons was closed down. Both locations that are over here. Second Cup was closed. Uh, I wasn't going to go to Starbucks, so it was a bit further. And well, as long as I'm not supporting the fucking Mad Clown Parlor, I'm good. Hard to believe. Almost eight o'clock. No coffee shops are open. Had this been pre-pandemic, one of them would have been open until nine, ten, maybe eleven. 
What can you do, everyone? It was a nice night at least, good coffee to top off some quality brews, and a nice tartar hunt. That wasn't a complete loss, but I'm going to be heading home, so I figured may as well get home before I go crazy. So thanks for watching this latest edition of the Wander Yuki Cheese Cafe. And if you like what you see, yep, for sure, hit that subscribe button below and give me a thumbs up if you enjoy my antics and wanders. If you have an idea of something else I could check out one of these days, leave it in the comments section and we'll see what we can do. Till then, happy weekend, everyone. Hmm. Seriously, coffee shops aren't open past eight o'clock? You think nobody drank at this time of the night?